Crystal Hefner is speaking out for the first time about life inside the Playboy Mansion and her marriage to controversial Playboy founder Hugh Hefner. Crystal Hefner spent nearly a decade living at the mansion and moved out after her husband's death in 2017. But in her new book, she writes she lost her identity because of this relationship. The book is called Only Say Good Things, Surviving Playboy and Finding Myself. And Hefner writes, quote, the number one rule of Hef's world is you didn't say anything bad about Hef. Life was a classic Hollywood romance and life was good. Playboy did not respond to multiple requests for comment, and Crystal Hefner joins us now, first on CBS Mornings. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations on the Thank book. You. Thank you. So, Crystal, despite living at the mansion for nearly a decade, you say that it never felt like home. You write about having nightly curfews. You write about the power dynamics and conforming to specific body standards through plastic surgery. Um, you've said in other interviews that you look back on that time with regret and disgust. Break down that characterization for me. Um, being at the mansion was very hard. It was very traumatic looking back and as I go through therapy after I left, um, your value was skin deep. So you had to make sure that you looked perfect at all times or at least perfect to what, you know, have standards were. And so when you say that you were brainwashed, that you felt like you were brainwashed when you look back at that time, people will say, did you really not know what you were getting into by even being at a party at the Playboy Mansion? Yeah, I think this was a time like pre Me Too and when Playboy was kind of more at its prime and it's something that girls aspired to be part of and you know, I, was, I was a part of that. I, I was 21, you know, I was an adult, but, but looking back now as a 37 year old, I'm like, I was, I was young and impressionable for sure. Yeah, you, you knew what you were doing. It's, it's interesting because I find myself with this book fascinated and repulsed at the same time. Because here you go, that first night, it's lights, camera, action, and all that we know about the Playboy Mansion, it was exciting, it was fun, you know, it was really sex, drugs, and rock and roll. So you go there, and that very first night, Hugh picks you out of the crowd, doesn't he? Can you move your hair? Your hair is gorgeous, but it's hitting your microphone. Okay. Yeah, yeah, if you could move it back. So he picks you out that very first night that you're there. Yeah, very first night, and I felt like the, the chosen one. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, you felt like the chosen one, that he chose me. Yeah. And then once you're there, you said there, you really can't even trust any of the girls because you said, I think your words, we would shank each other. Everybody was sort of vying for his affection. Yeah, yeah, everyone was against each other and it was very hard. Female friendship was very hard there. I like to, you said, Hefner was a, the poster boy for sexual liberation, but you never felt liberated in the bedroom. Mm. It was always framed as a choice, an invisible trap framed by the language of choice. Could you elaborate on what you mean by that? Yeah, I think, I think that's very strong. I think Playboy itself, when Hef started the brand, I think he wanted it to be all about freedom and expression. And when I was at the mansion, I feel I completely lost myself to what was expected of me. So there was, there was nothing free about it. I felt trapped. But, but yet you get married in 2012. Yes. This is the thing that got to me. Because you are 26 and he is 86. Yes. So what were you thinking at that time? Because you, you can't call this love, could you? No. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was, was love. I did care for him. Yeah. He, I, he was getting older, and I know he wanted to protect his image and just be the man that he was to the public. And, and you also said you thought he needed you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I felt sorry for him in a way and felt, felt that he really needed me because... At a certain point, like, I didn't need him for anything. I was good on my own. I had money. I had all these things. And, but I remember telling my mom, I'm like, he needs me. Mm -hmm. So I stayed. Mm -hmm. you, you write that it was a job, that you didn't really love him, that he didn't have any of the qualities that you imagined that you would find in a man when you dreamed about potentially getting married. What, was, what did the job entail? The job entailed <laughs> completely losing myself to someone else. And I didn't fully realized that until later. So I just made myself Hef's mirror, and mm -hmm. that was my job. But as you sit here today, 36, 37? 37. 37, 37. Still very young, very young. <laughs> yes, as you I sit like here to today, you. what is your life like today, and what do you want people to know about the woman that you are today? Life is good now. I finally have freedom. Do you I have go love in your life? I do. I have recent love in my I'm life. Oh, congratulations. Thank mm -hmm. you. It feels very healthy, and and I'm happy, and I'm, I'm finally finding myself who I am and what I enjoy. You yeah, feel better. 
Yeah. Okay, but I do want to read this on, about Hef's death because I think it sort of sums it up from GLAD. Hefner was not a visionary. He was a misogynist who built an empire on sexualizing women and mainstreaming stereotypes that caused irreparable damage to women's rights and our entire culture. I don't think this could thrive today. When you hear that about him, do you think that's accurate? I think it's accurate. I think the mansion could never happen today. It was almost like it was some type of social experiment. Um, yeah, it can never be repeated, for sure. Thank you for being here, Crystal. Thank I'm you. glad you have love in your life. Yes. And that you're feeling you really better about your life these days. Thank you. I'm very glad to hear that. Only Say Good Things is available today.